By all the sports medicine evaluations, she was the fittest woman athlete in Australia and our best hope for gold at the Winter Olympics. But then an accident smashed her body, her sporting aspirations, and it seemed her life. The surgeons told her she'd probably never walk again, probably never have children. Yet despite remaining a partial paraplegic, she has done all that and a lot more. Against the odds, Janine Shepherd has claimed back her life. My last memory was riding up um, a hill called Boddington Hill and then looking up to see the sun shining in my face and that was the last memory. I used to, I, I had this fascination with wanting to remember the accident and I, you know, there've been times when I've just lied in bed and I've, I've gone over it in my mind, what I've been wearing and riding up the hill and then there's absolutely no way I can remember. A country road, a lone cyclist and a careless driver. They combine to create a moment in time that changes a life forever. What's the first memory afterwards? Waking up in intensive care. You know, to go from one minute being on a bicycle riding and then the next minute waking up you know, in somewhere where you ha have absolutely no idea where you are. It's like a time warp. You know, it's, it's, it's like a bad dream. It's a nightmare. The woman who lay in hospital hovering between life and death was Janine Shepherd. It was 1986 and she was Australia's top female cross-country skier and our best hope for the Calgary 88 Winter Olympics. She was someone who I thought was perhaps the most exciting prospect to come onto the Australian skiing scene in a long, long time. Her coach was Andrew Horsley. Cross-country skiing is uh, the sort of endurance sport which requires very high oxygen uptake. And Janine was right up there. And she had tremendous muscular strength too. She was someone who wouldn't quit. She just wouldn't give up. She could take on the guys, beat the guys. She was one of the most ferociously competitive women I've ever seen. The young woman athlete would now need every ounce of her sporting competitiveness to be channeled not to win, but simply to live. Well, I broke my neck and my back in um, four places, and I broke my um, right arm and five ribs on my left side and cut my head open right across the front. In fact, my forehead was pushed right back, and you could see all the, the bones underneath and I cut my head across the back as well and um, broke my collarbone and um, my little toe it's an important one I think the worst part was when they said was it to you they said oh I think I think she's gone there's no blood pressure Janine Shepherd's parents and Max and, uh, and Shirley on the first night of what was to be a very long vigil they were giving her blood but as quick as I was giving to it was running out it was, she was just like she was a sponge. It was just, they couldn't, they couldn't, they didn't know where she was bleeding from. For almost a week, she lived in that half world between life and death. These are times perhaps worse for the living than the dying. Did, did you get a clear idea from the doctors whether she was going to live or die? Oh, they didn't think she would. <laughs> I didn't don't think, think I don't no. think, they don't think they, they really expected it. Of course, I wasn't in a, you know, a state to really understand that at the time, so that was the worst news, obviously, for Mum and Dad, that uh, I wasn't going to live. But she did live, fighting back with all the focused resolve of the athlete. She lived, but for a young woman, broken at the peak of her athletic powers, life like this might be worse than death. He was a lady who suffered multiple injuries, was terribly ill. Spinal expert Dr John Yeo. Without complex spinal surgery, the patient would never walk again. And even with the surgery, there would be no guarantees. 
the spine itself was quite severely damaged and the cord inside the spine was very badly bruised. There were bits of bone around and the spine needed to be stabilised. There's nothing really to do, just lie on your back. And Janine you can, lay you know, immobile you for 12 weeks, and not knowing if the surgery you know, had been a success. Like for Max this, and Shirley, the wait was excruciating. But basically the whole thing was a waiting game. You, you just had to wait and they, and they were, they never ever gave you any um, hope. They were always painting the blackest picture. They said she would walk, but they didn't know how well. They said she may have to have calipers or she might have to use sticks or whatever. Uh, so they can... with your legs now. Yes. Oh! <laughs> this is wild, isn't it? With your well, legs now, yes. how do you how have you had to modify your style for what we're about to do? Well, I don't do? have any style now, Charles, oh. but um it's taken eight painful years for Janine Shepherd to defy all the worst case scenarios. So I can't actually tell what my feet are doing. You can't feel your feet? No, I have to sort of look down. She wasn't expected to live, wasn't expected to walk, and as for skiing, well, she mightn't be as good as she was, but she's a lot better than some of us. So good luck like running up the hill. You can follow me. I'm not very good at it now, but... Looking at her now, it's easy to forget just how badly damaged she really is. Woo! That was a pretty slippery hill, that Wait one. for me, Janine! <laughs> There's a bit of ice there, Charles. It was gusting up to 100 kilometres an hour the day she took us back to the snow. Whoa! He looks like he's having a good time. She's come a long way from the spinal wound, But for a woman who once dominated this sport, it can't be easy being relegated to the sidelines. So I've tried to get a little bit of a jog up, I guess. In the past, I've tended to avoid on, going go. down there and seeing them because it's a little bit, as I said, like rubbing salt in the wound. But the, st the funny thing is, it's not something that I feel that I have to avoid anymore. I feel like I've really come to terms with that. And that's something that I had in my life and I can't do that anymore. But, you know, I just look at all the things I can do so that you know, tends to make up for it. And then we saw some men Against the odds, for a woman who remains substantially paralysed below the waist, Janine and husband Tim have produced Annabelle and Charlotte. Janine makes recovery look easy. But she's the first to admit that it wasn't. When I got home from hospital, I was terribly, terribly depressed. There were days when I thought, gosh, I wish... Oh my God, why didn't you take me? You know, why do I have to be here going through this? And I honestly thought, you know, if I did take my life, what would that, what would that do to mum and dad? Janine believes she finally came to terms with her problems by writing a book about them. She's called it Never Tell Me Never. I guess that reflects my philosophy in life. After I had the accident, people were always telling me that there were things that I wouldn't be able to do again, that I wouldn't be able to be an athlete again and that I wouldn't be able to do things and I guess I just you know I just I just don't listen to things like that I I just like to go out and and give it a go anyway well I've already I've already done the, the pre-flight um all we need is for you you could possibly go and kick a tire or something but I'm not I'm not inclined to want to do this you know <laughs> I mean I could sit down here and I could look up and watch you and I could still say what a remarkable and capable young woman you were. Janine will try anything. For her, but not see, even the sky is a limit. You, do, you don't have any choice. And apparently it's not true that you have to learn to walk before you can fly. We should have, we should have enough fuel. She had to be carried to the plane for her first flying well, lesson. You'll, you'll be gentle with me, well, won't you? I will. Now well, she's not only a qualified so pilot, but a qualified instructor in aerobatics. Because unlike you, I have feeling from the tips of my toes to the top of my head. <laughs> well, there are advantages to having a numb bum. <laughs> Janine Shepherd is altogether an inspiring yeah, and admirable on young the, woman. The She's also yeah. an extremely yeah. forceful so, one. Just on the, on the black she must have been so to get me even this close to a stunt plane. Now, as I said, it's not that I lack confidence in you specifically, but if you haven't got any feelings in your feet, how do you know that they're actually on the controls there? Well, <clears throat> because I control them with my legs, so I just know that they're on the pedals now and, you know, it's a bit of potluck, I guess. <laughs> Headsets on. If she's come so far, surely I can go some of the way to indulge her enthusiasm. 
Not that any of her other admirers in this story were prepared to make this leap of faith. Not the ski coach. Tell me, would you go stunt flying with her? No. Not even her dad? Honest answer, no. <laughs> but Janine thought it was important that I confronted my fear. And with a mixture of charm and bullying, this girl just swept me off my feet. I just love flying. It's a, you know, a sense of freedom, and I guess it was flying that got me back on my feet, so to speak. So, you know, I, I just, I just really love to go out and shake out the cobwebs and turn an aeroplane upside down every now and then. You'd appreciate that, surely. I, I didn't. it didn't get any better. Okay, ready? Oh, God. Whoa. Oh, my God. I knew she had no feeling in her legs. Now I was starting to wonder if she had any feeling in her heart. No. In the end, the only way I could get her to take me down was to reach back and turn off the camera. When you look at life now, as opposed to life before the accident, how do you evaluate things? I mean, I don't suppose you can say the accident was a good thing. Well, not at the time I didn't, but definitely I, d I do now. You do? Yeah, I, I don't feel bitter at all. I think that, you know, I have this philosophy that everything works for a good. And as the saying goes, you're about as happy as you make up your mind to be. And if you decide that that's what you want to be in life, if you want to be happy, if you want to get on and succeed and take control of your life, and you make that decision, then it, it, it will happen because it's... Would you have won a gold medal? A gold medal? Well, I've won one. I've got my two children and my family, so I've won a gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> 